Hello, my name is Cecilia Campillo. I'm TCE program manager for El Pueblo Clinic's TCE program. Uh, El Pueblo Clinic is the only nonprofit clinic in Tucson that's addressing a particular health concern caused by trichloroethylene, also known as TCE, which harm the health of uh, residents on the south side. We have been in operations since 1974 with this program. And currently, we have over 800 patients that we are seeing. Today's guests are here to bring us information and to educate the public on things that are occurring within our community. This is also awareness that uh, we want to bring to Tucson on a problem that uh, occurred over 40 years ago and today continues to affect our everyday lives. Uh, our first guest today is Abe Campillo. Uh, Abe is a resident of Tucson, and uh, he's also a active member of the Health Advisory Board, and he will explain uh, to us what Health Advisory stands for. Hi, Abe, and welcome. Thank you for the invitation. Tell us a little bit about some of the background of the uh, clinic and bring us up to speed onto where we are with the TCE program, if you will, please. Okay. Well, uh, we have to go back in history, I guess. Uh, <clears throat> you got to realize at that time in the 19, early 70s, uh, there were little or no health services in the South Side. Uh, there was uh, actually no type of service. The people, the residents had to travel across town if they wanted to apply for welfare. Uh, they want to apply for any uh, state assistance or any, any type of governmental assistance. There was nothing in the South Side. So people out there got involved into asking why we didn't have those services. So we, we uh, got together and went before the city council and uh, several times, and we requested that we uh, have a community center, a neighborhood center such as El Rio had already been established on, uh, on, on Speedway. And after a lot of struggle, we were finally given the funds to build the El Pueblo Neighborhood Center. Mm -hmm. Now, going back to health services, like I said, there was nothing outside of the old county hospital, which uh, was very dilapidated and, and uh, needed a lot of repairs. And uh, there wasn't really any type, uh, you know, even though they were giving good uh, service, uh, but people were asking for something else. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so within the complex of El Pueblo, um, I was elected the uh, operations um, uh, person, um, chairperson, and one of the things that I demanded that a building there and that complex be used for health services. And, and it came about, I, uh, I named it El Centro de Salud del Sur, and there was a first health service established in the south side, and that was in, uh, around 1974. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it was very unique because, like I say, I went to the University of Arizona and talked at that time, I think, um, oh, I forget the name of the uh, director there. Um, and she, she equipped the, the, the building with uh, hospital equipment, uh, doctor's office, and she provided the nursing care and uh, part-time doctors. Uh, it was all free of charge. And it was very interesting we got that, uh, that going. And all this time, I had not known about the uh, free clinic, but the free clinic was having problems moving from one location to another. And then they found, about, found out about the El Pueblo building, and uh, they asked for permission to move into that building. And uh, it became the El Pueblo Clinic Wonderful. at that time. And it's been giving great service since 1974. It's been giving beautiful service. Uh, people are... Uh, very in tune to if they have any particular problem or health problem, mm -hmm. that's where they go to. Right. And in 19, 20 years later, in 1994, what happened uh, at that time uh, regarding TCE? Uh, the program came to be, and can you expound on well, that? Uh, well, at that time, we had um, also gotten some community development block grant money from the city of Tucson, and we built the, the new El Pueblo Clinic. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, at that time, the, the, the TC program was just getting started, and, and uh, there was no monies, uh, naturally. And uh, 
after the settlement, uh, uh, the lawsuit settlement, uh, people became more aware of what was happening because there was very little, it was kept sort of like a hush-hush thing about the lawsuit and only uh, about 1,600 people, as I understand, were, were actually in the lawsuit. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of uh, uh, comments, uh, a lot of, a lot of um, activity going in within the community. And then people are saying, so we got some money for the people, fine. How about our health care? Mm -hmm. And nobody, nobody said anything. What about health care? Well, no, people were exposed. Mm -hmm. People are sick. Um, Going back to what, when I was uh, working the poverty program, I saw a lot of, when I was doing a home visit to poor families, I saw a lot of people dying. Uh, at that time, I didn't, I just thought it was a great number of people dying. I never tied it in with the uh, uh, exposure to, uh, to the TC uh, problem. You know, at that time, there was no TC problem. And, and the deaths were occurring in a specific area. And right, in the south saying. side, uh, mm -hmm. uh, south of the uh, Pueblo, Clinic, mm -hmm. and there was a, a lot, uh, and I, I still remember some some of the families that I really got involved with, mm -hmm. in trying to help the families after the husband or the wife passed away from uh, cancer, and uh, it was a very, very dramatic. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I never tied it down to any any uh, exposure. And uh, after the community learned, including yourself, that there was no money for health care. what action was taken? What did the community do to take action on this matter? Well. Uh, again, uh, the people uh, were very concerned at, uh, about the health care, and they wanted some type of health care. And they, um, and some of the people got together with other agencies. We approached the city, uh, city government, state government, uh, um, county government, other agencies within the Pima County, mm -hmm. and we all got together and we formed what, the, what was known as a TC subcommittee. Mm -hmm. And we discussed all the problems. There was a lot of a lot of involvement. There was a lot of fight, infighting among the community because everybody had their own idea of what they wanted and what they didn't want. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of friction. Mm -hmm. But eventually we came together and the TC subcommittee um, uh, got, uh, and made a, a request to the Board of Health that uh, we get a grant from Pima County to provide health care. Mm -hmm. And eventually they, they did that. We went to the Board of Health the Board of Health, uh, in, in, turn, in return, uh, um, requested from the supervisors a uh, um, uh, total of $250,000 to, to begin a TC program. Mm -hmm. And everybody voted to put the program at the El Clinic, uh, El Pueblo Clinic. It was in the heart of the, the El Pueblo Clinic is located right within the Superfund site, right in the plume, as mm -hmm. you might want to call it. So it was very interesting that uh, everybody was 100% in favor of the uh, public clinic mm -hmm. in the contract. Which makes it also very accessible to all the people that were exposed, uh, that clinic being on a perfect site where people are uh, have access to, to the site and can come in with uh, um, ease, you might mm -hmm. say, with a great ease. And very much so, because like I say, they, they were used to going to El Pueblo mm -hmm. uh, for other health services. and. Um, so it turned out to be uh, a perfect match, you know, the, the uh, board of supervisors, give them that. And as I understand, they give us a contract, and um, as I understand, also you developed the, the program that is now in place, and it's become a very well-known uh, program, not only here in the state of Arizona, but it's got national recognition of what the community can do to get this type of uh, programs off the ground. And. Uh the state of Arizona, when did they come in with some assistance with money uh, to supplant what the Pima County had given us? Well, right after we, we uh, got the program, the TC program, off the ground, then we started saying, as you know, health care is uh, so costly, you know, mm -hmm. and we thought we would get more money, and we, uh, we asked our District 10 legislators to mm -hmm. come meet with us, mm -hmm. and they did, and... Um, and we told them what the problem was, and we were asking for state support, matching mm -hmm. funds, uh, per se, is what we were asking for. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> at that time, Senator Soltero introduced a bill mm -hmm. uh, in, in Phoenix, uh, state legislature. Now, we went to Phoenix to back that bill up, and uh, we were really scrutinized by the Legislative Appropriations Committee. They uh, asked us some real, real hard questions. 
what are you going to do with the money and and are you sure you're going to spend it the way you're supposed mm -hmm. to do and we we gave them all the uh, details we already had the program ongoing as you as I just mentioned mm -hmm. and they uh, they liked it and they uh, funded us mm -hmm. and so all of a sudden we were getting five hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars instead of the uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars from the mm -hmm. county that's very good um, we're going we're, we'll come back to to you Abe um, I have a couple of other questions regarding technical assistance and and what's continuing to happen at this point but right now, I'd like to introduce uh, another member of the community, a uh, very active member in the community, Anne Montano, who has been uh, one of the uh, leaders and uh, pioneers in uh, the help that, uh, and the information that was given to the community during the time that uh, the uh, health problems were starting to occur. And um, we'd like to hear from you, Anne, you know, a little bit of history, especially and particularly in, uh, in the Calle Evelina area where you're very familiar with that particular area. Can you tell us a little bit about that history, please? Okay. And welcome, Anne. Oh, thank you very much, Cecilia. It's an honor to be here today. And uh, in spe uh, talking specifically about Calle Evelina, uh, members of Tesoros for a Clean Environment walked up and down the streets within a three-block radius and we interviewed people who lived in the, on the south side uh, within a, these three blocks. Mm -hmm. And we encountered people who had cancer, who had lupus, uh, people with neurological uh, disorders, young people, uh, all ages. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, it was uh, devastating to see the degree of, of uh, illness within that uh, area. Mm -hmm. And um, we've been hearing about other people who were affected. Of course, everything came to light after Jane Kay's article. And uh, I remember the first time uh, when, I, when I went to a, a meeting and uh, Rick Gonzalez was there, uh, Saul Blackman, um, and Rick and Melinda were talking about um, how they had been hearing about people dying within the neighborhood. And, uh, and so they formed this committee. And then, um, uh, community started to get involved, other people interested. And as I say, Jane Kay's article uh, helped us a great deal. And so uh, we uh, started interviewing people. Uh, members of Tucson's for Clean Environment went to the Clearinghouse for Toxic Waste and were um, oriented by Lois Gibbs of Love Canal. And uh, then we came back and continued working towards our common goals that we have here. And that's one of the things that makes me happiest, that what all, we, all, all that we do is, is uh, the emphasis is to help the people in the community, to help our people. That is wonderful. And um, part of uh, all the work that you've done in the past is uh, still continues even today. Uh, uh, what we're trying to give the community is education and, as I mentioned, awareness and uh, just to really stay tuned to what's hap wha ha what happens in the community when there is a problem and how uh, people will, uh, s uh, how the community here in Tucson supports and surrounds it with all their help. People like yourself and other members of uh, Tucsonas for a Clean Environment that were instrumental in, in participating in the education and the, especially the awareness of what was occurring in our town. Mm -hmm. uh, I think people came together and, and it was wonderful work uh, that your group was doing at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but I had another, as a community person, uh, what, um, what do you think about uh, the efforts of the clinic that it's doing currently today? Um, I'm very proud of the work that's being done with the clinic. Of course, in all my concerns for our community, uh, whether it be in in education, in the realm of education, because um, I, I helped, uh, well, Ed Lindsay always said that I helped him found adult basic education. He was being very generous, because all I did was go house to house and get people motivated, go on the radio and the, uh, on TV to motivate people to study. And then um, the idea is to work with people to reach a common goal. Mm -hmm. And the same thing working with Alba Torres, uh, saving the historic sites. Mm -hmm. so that we could have something 
for future generations. Mm -hmm. Now we're concerned with lives. Absolutely. I mean, the lives of, of the residents, and, and all of us are here because we care about our people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that's essentially uh, why I'm so happy that the clinic is in existence. And, and uh, I know of Rose Augustine, uh, who is also president and, and the person that did so much for uh, Tucsonans for Clean Environment, we're here today. Mm -hmm. I know that she would, mm -hmm. uh, she would tell you that, uh, that, that we're, we're happy that, that something has been done for the community. Mm -hmm. You're right. And an effort will be ongoing. You're right. And in fact, uh, we've invited uh, Rose or uh, are trying to communicate with Rose so that she could come in and give her perspective because certainly she has a great deal of knowledge in all that had, uh, has occurred. And we really need to, to um, have her come in and to our program one of these days uh, to talk about her experience. You know, Rose had the good fortune. Uh, to be part of the Southwest Organizing Council. Mm -hmm. And so we had access to, uh, to uh, traveling the country and expounding on uh, you know, what was happening here in Tucson. Mm -hmm. And so we had their support. I remember one meeting I went in Albuquerque and we told about what was happening here in Tucson. Mm -hmm. And then other people, chiefs, you know, uh, tr tribal chiefs of the three corners, et cetera, would tell us their concerns. Mm -hmm. So you know, we've gone international. And, and, and trying to help each other. And so this is one way to express our concern for this others This is too. true community action. Mm -hmm. uh, and how do you view the uh, future efforts uh, to help people, um, especially the young people? How are we, how are, what are we planning to do to keep them interested and informed about uh, the happenings with TCE, uh, their health especially? Uh, at the clinic uh, in <clears throat> El Pueblo, the TC program is now seeing a lot of young uh, people with illnesses that uh, are potentially uh, associated to, to the contamination. Um, but more, more than that, we want to, how do you plan how to continue um, this, this awareness? I think what you're doing today is a tremendous indicator of, of, of the possibilities in informing and educating the public. And um, I think that a lot of been damage has been done to our youth, and, and we don't know about future generations. Um, so, and one of the good things is, is that uh, we have the clinic. If we didn't have the clinic, there would be no hope. And for that, you know, we invite uh, people to um, visit our clinic and to get to know uh, what the program is about. Uh, we're, as you know, we're located on Irvington and 6th at 101 West Irvington. And um, you can always c uh, contact us at, at our number, which is 746 mm -hmm. 8828. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Anne. And I'll come back to you, but we're coming back to Abelardo, to Abe, uh, to ask him. <clears throat> a couple of questions. And Abe, uh, was technical assistance uh, provided uh, for the residents of the South Side during this period of uh, problem? Not, uh, not right away. Um, as usual, everything people have to uh, request things from the, from the feds. Um, when the UCAP was first organized, uh, we met with the PRPs, which is a probable responsible party, that's what they're called. And they came and started to report to the community uh, the types of problems that we're having, the type of cleanups that we're having. And it was very technical uh, for us to understand what they were talking about. So <clears throat> we needed some kind of technical assistance. Uh, Two Science for a Clean Environment approached uh, EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. And uh, fortunately, there were, there were some technical assistance grants available. Uh, uh, that, of $50,000 each grant. Um, the only problem is that they were not incorporated. So as being president of LULAC Council 1060, which is a league of United Latin American citizens, mm -hmm. we are incorporated. And they asked me if I could uh, be the uh, grantee for this particular grant. And I said yes. Um, and we applied for the loan. And we, we, got, the, we got the grant. And we hired uh, Mr. Peter Strauss. MHB uh, firm from San Jose. And he came down whenever there were meetings. 
and he talked to the responsible party, so PRPs, and they uh, and he would come back and meet with the community, <clears throat> and draft up papers and tell us what exactly what they were saying, and then he would give his views in layman terms. In, la in layman terms, exactly, because mm -hmm. he would tell us, yeah, they're doing. In fact, uh, Mr. Peter Strauss asked me, Abe, hey, what is it you want from me? Okay. All I want to know, I told him, uh, is that whatever they're doing for the cleanup is the best technology available and that they're doing a good job. That's all, I w that's all we're asking. And if you can report to us at, in that level, we'll decide whether uh, we're happy with what's going on. You've got to remember at the very beginning, we didn't trust anybody. We were, we were very skeptical of the federal people, any governmental people where the community was. But eventually, through uh, uh, Mr. Strauss, uh, the UCAP started getting more feedback of what's happening, and, uh, and the uh, uh, PRP started seeing that we were, so we became joint, and I think right now we do have uh, a very um, nice relationship with them, mm -hmm. and they still keep on um, uh, coming to report for us on a monthly basis, but I think we got now to the point that we sort of understand what they're trying to tell us. So um, Thank you. The, the only thing that uh, <clears throat> I tell, and I think Annie and you have heard me in the beginning of my soapbox, is saying that the state of Arizona is contributing towards the health care. Uh, Pima County uh, is helping us with health care. The federal government spent millions of dollars cleaning up the soil, and they have to do it, and you know, like it has to be done. And the water. And the water. But when it comes to health care, they haven't contributed a penny. And, and they're the ones that, um, that, that cost it. We didn't ask for this problem. And not at all, you know. Uh, they established their, their uh, aircraft factories here, and they just dumped that uh, TCE into the ground. It affected us and health-wise. And a very, uh, to this day, I'll always be very, uh, very angry with the fact that they have not contributed a penny for, towards the health care of the people, the community. Well, I really want to thank you for that the very complete information, and um, um, I know that you will continue to be a part of this community, especially where TCE is concerned, very supportive. And I want to thank Annie as well, because uh, we need people like yourselves to just stay with the program, stay with the in information to the community. And um, do I have time for one more comment? Absolutely. Uh, sure. One of the things that I see is since the program started in '94, we've been getting funding, but I see, I get a feeling now that the state is sort of floundering. Uh, the Pima County is floundering as to where they continue the program. And that makes me mad because, uh, like I say, the only bright spot that came out of the whole area is a little dot, mm -hmm. which is the Alpebo Clinic and the, and, and the health care that being provided to us. Mm -hmm. And to take that away from us, uh, I think, would be sort of like a slap in the face. Well, you know, Abe, one of the responses I like to give to that is that as long as there is con inconclusive evidence that there is a causal um, relation, a uh, causal effect between TCE and, and the health problems, then the TCE program needs to continue uh, until there is an answer definitely whether or not TCE was a cause of this problem. But in the meantime, the clinic at El Pueblo is addressing the many concerns of the citizens of the South Side uh, who bring their uh, uh, ca cases uh, concerned with anemia, diabetes, hearing impairment, heart condition, high blood pressure, skin rashes, speech impairments, stroke, urinary disorders, you name it, we are addressing them. And these are folks that are very concerned about the um, contamination that occurred on the South Side. And as long as there's not a clear answer, the clinic will continue to do its job, so to that, do the work that, it's, uh, that is needed for this community. And Annie, do you have a yes. uh, comment on yes. that? Yes. Uh, with respect to the cleanup uh, for the UCAP, uh, we go to the meetings, and, uh, and they're using different technologies uh, to clean up the water. And uh, we need more participation, community participation in those meetings. Uh, but I see it as a very positive effort to, to clean our water that's going to take 200 years. So mm -hmm. we need a lot of participation, young people involved, too. Absolutely. And, and, thank uh, you. and I see it as a proving ground for mm -hmm. the world mm -hmm. and the cleanup of the water. 
Thank you, Anne. And the, and, the, and the bottom line is, I think Anne mentioned it, is that future, what happened in Tucson happened, and we can only work towards uh, resolving what's happened, but we're hoping that future, after we're gone, future generations don't have to go through it again. You know, you have contam contamination in areas of the port, and so uh, people have to be educated so that uh, we can continue, uh, you know, facing these problems that affect the future generation, <coughs> Cecilia. Yes, and in our uh, one of our next one of our programs coming up, we'll be talking about environmental justice, uh, where uh, and called environmental racism in some cases, uh, and Tucson was a prime example of that. Uh, we're running out of time for today's program, but I really want to thank you both one more time. And uh, just stay um, very tuned to the people on the south side and in Tucson in general, because this affects all of us as citizens of this community. We love Tucson. We want to keep it as healthy and as clean as possible and with community action that can be done. I want to thank you once again for tuning us in. And w we will um, be back with special guests in our next series of uh, programs. Thank you.